having the capacity offices all the way through to those who work in the grounds keeping add your blessing to them lord may they never think that they are being marginalized or taken for granted but deeply appreciated for the service they give back to our community but lord in all of the giving may we always remember that it is for you and for your glory that we give. So empower them tonight, guide them and direct them, go before them and prepare their way to make the decisions, Father, that's consistent with your will for this community. As the mayor has indicated, Lord, for these that have gone on to their final reward, we ask, Lord, your grace and your mercy for their families. May they enjoy a peace and knowledge and understanding that while we may not understand, you do, Father. Come alongside them and strengthen them. And we ask all these things in the powerful name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Actually, I got to start writing bigger or wearing my glasses. It's Willie Adams, not William Adams. Thanks, Pastor. <coughs> start with roll call. Mayor Durrani? Here. Councilman Barber? Here. Councilman Girl? Here. Councilman Hug? Here. Councilman McFarland? Here. Councilman Morris? Here. Councilman Odekirk? Here. Councilman McClellan? Here. Councilman Turk? Here. Next approval of minutes. Is there a motion that the minutes of the special meeting held on May 6, 2013 and of the regular meeting held on May 7, 2013 stand approved as recorded? So moved. Second. Second. Krista? Been motion and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Barber? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman McFarland? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. <coughs> Mayor Durrani? Aye. Motion carried. Next, Council Committee report, Reports, Communication Technology and Information Systems. <coughs> I think that um, Ben is supposed to go. Ben's coming. Scott's going to go. Mr. Mayor and members of the council, we did meet last week uh, <coughs> at the request of council to review a number of different projects, uh, including uh, the transparency update that was given by Ben, the Northern Illinois University Agreement for Fiber, fiber Optic Networking, <coughs> as well as the ERP replacement project. Ben also did an update on the Impact Outdoor and Joliet Park District um, sign project so what I'd like to do is just kind of give you a brief overview of, of each of these different things uh, and I will be brief so regarding the Northern Illinois agreement um, this is not on tonight's agenda for any decision and CTIS has directed us to look for alternate funding for for this effort but we'll give you a sense for what it is so that when it does come back before you have you're well informed um, there's really two objectives with this project the first one is to establish terms and conditions for professional services with NIU. The second one is to uh, an exhibit that was an attachment to that, which is a, um, the development of a business case for fiber optic networking for the city. You might want to know why would we consider doing this with them. Um, essentially, there's a, really, a real growing demand for high-speed networking within the city. Um, we believe this will help position us as a business destination uh, as we and, and set a plan for the future for uh, you know for doing these types of things we believe it will uh, give us higher speed and lower cost potential for access to the internet and to other network services and it will allow us to establish standards for uh, how we would connect things together um, there's a big project going on right now at the transportation center we think this this project will lay a foundation for how we connect that transportation center campus to our existing network, primarily for video surveillance and access control. Um, longer term, we think 
it will uh, also provide benefits to constituent agencies, uh, other governments, schools, libraries, theaters, museums, uh, and you know, getting this thing off the ground in terms of setting a longer term plan will help us down that path. Um, why Northern Illinois University? Uh, they're independent. You know, they're not affiliated with any resellers. They're really committed to uh, local government. They're experienced. They've done many, many projects with the uh, public sector, and uh, they've helped to, to uh, acquire more than $100 million <coughs> worth of grants to help, to help communities uh, build up their fiber connections within, uh, you know, within their areas to get access to uh, network services. Uh, excuse problem. me, excuse yeah. me, uh, suggestion for other sources of revenue, like? Um, well, we're, we're taking that back to look at um, things like the city center special services area. Uh, it was suggested to consider the TIF, you know, for the downtown area. Um, that's still under consideration. I'm not sure where that will land, how much money is available, whether or not it would even apply. But um, really what we're talking about is an $8,000 start for, uh, you know, you know, kind of kicking off this thing in terms of the business case, and uh, we're looking at we're looking at those things, but no decisions <coughs> been made. Where we left it is that we would we would gather that information, come back to CTIS, present alternatives, and to and to see whether or not there would be, uh, you know, which direction anybody would want to go with how we would fund it. I would like to see this as soon as possible because I think this is very important. We're moving forward with what we're trying to do here right. in the city. Okay, thank you. The second one is the ERP replacement project. Once again, this is not on tonight's <coughs> agenda. This is a big project that right now is in the vendor and product selection phase. It involves um, really all of our public administration software areas. Three big classifications include the financials that we have, uh, our community development area, and our utility management suite. I'm not going to you know, belabor the discussion by talking about each and everything. <coughs> But it's been a long time since these things have been updated, and we've been pursuing this for about a year um, and are, are well on the way to bring in a recommendation for council consideration. So just to give you a heads up, what are the benefits of this? Uh, big contributor to open government and transparency um, and really enhancing our, our public admin functions uh, through streamlined <coughs> workflow. Today we have older technology. It's just not effective in terms of how the staff works. Um, it's been a long time since it's been, it's been upgraded, and uh, this is an opportunity to kind of take us into the next century and, and uh, allow us to do a much better job serving the community. Um, it's been requested uh, since I walked in the door about two years ago. It's been the number one thing coming to me in terms of uh, staff requests, and it, it's even been mentioned in our audit if we had better ways to get to information, uh, better reporting, that it would it would streamline the operation and then finally citizens with uh, being able to do self-service uh, stuff through the internet. It also uh, will help us reduce risk in our environment because we're on some antiquated technology that is being sunsetted you know by its vendor um, the AS400 and a diminishing uh, workforce that there's not nobody coming out of school with the, the <coughs> skills and, and uh, interest in, in jumping on board that type of technology that's the the kind of thing that we are uh, want to you know, eliminate that risk and put us on a platform that will be more appropriate for the future. And that kind of leads us to uh, uh, how does this prepare us for the future. And um, essentially, Will County is expected to grow by nearly <coughs> double over the next 20 to 30 years. And uh, we believe that this is an essential thing for us to be ready to be able to handle the business volumes and, the thi and, and just the, the types of things that will be coming at us. Um, and we think the commu our community does deserve better. They need better access to information. Uh, we need to be able to get to them online through the web and, um, you know, be able to do, a, you know, do that in a much more efficient way than we do today. Uh, what have we done so far? We've, we've uh, identified our sponsors. We've put, uh, identified our process owners and our subject matter experts. These are people that work on the staff here that are uh, responsible for the different process areas in each of those three major areas. We developed a, a, a comprehensive RFP, issued it to the public. Um, we have responses to that, and we're in the process right now of evaluating that, uh, and we'll be bringing forward a recommendation uh, sometime either in June or July. Uh, we're doing on-site <coughs> demonstrations and, and other reference follow-ups. And the CTIS committee has been with us every step of the way on this project. I think we've given them updates each and every month in the last you know, four to six months. Um, 
these are the vendors that received it. You may be familiar with some of these vendors, uh, especially the large tier one vendors, but the mid-market public sector uh, vendors are the ones that responded to it. So we had 11 different vendors, only three of them responded. We're currently a SunGuard customer. Uh, we're considering uh, Tyler Technologies and New World as alternatives. Um, the, the way that we're evaluating these vendors um, is number one, conformance to requirements, because if they can't do the work the way that we want to do it, then it's really not a solution. The second one is favorable contract terms, because we're looking for this to be a hosted solution. Uh, we have to be able to, to do it on our own terms. If we can't do it that way, then we're going to be kind of, uh, you know, it's also not a good solution for us. The third one is time to value. How quickly can they bring value into our environment? And then what is our overall cost? <coughs> Finally, favorable references. Thank you. This project would take between 18 and, tw and 24 months, and um, this is the way we're kind of representing it. Once we make a final decision about what we're going to do with this thing and we, and we have a real detailed plan, um, that will be refined. <coughs> but this is the big picture about how long it might take. We're going to start with financials, move into utility management, and then f and, and finish with community development. Um, what's next? Uh, we got to finalize what's in and what's out. We have to uh, complete our negotiations, which you know, I, you know, which um, which ice the terms, conditions, and total cost. We need to then bring that back to CTIS, the finance committee, and then the full council for uh, for final consideration. And um, that's really it on this project. I'm happy to take any questions. We can also cover that at the time when we bring it forward for, uh, you know, for. Um, What's, is there a downside by not acting on this fiber optics optics right now? Yeah, fiber optics. Um, it, it, the downside of that is that, that you know we'll continue to pay higher higher costs for communications that we will um, <clears throat> not be able to to you know connect in optimal ways. Um, that's really the downside of it. Okay. <coughs> Thanks, Scott. Mayor. Yes. Um, we're pinching pennies on it you know, to bring it back, but just to, and this is something Tom Fannis might address too. Then, actually, the most immediate benefactor of this uh, analysis, if you would, would be the multimodal uh, cameras. What did we say? How many cameras did you say there could be? We were, we discussed that in the committee. Yeah, sure. There's going to be around 150 cameras, <clears throat> right? In the transportation. And the fiber optic. I mean, the fiber optic is just it's it's really what we're looking at now is solely based at the downtown both business and governmental uses. Mm -hmm. um, is there any money in the multimodal budget to pay towards it, Tom, or is it something you can look into? Uh, we'll look into it. I mean, the multimodal budget um, uh, is earmarked for six phases of the project, and uh, it's a very complicated project. You know, we just let the bid at the last meeting for the platform project. That's a uh, $6.7 million project. And because it's an old downtown area and we're opening up a lot of earth, we're running into some subsurface problems. So I really can't say that there's extra money in the budget to cover even an $8,000 expenditure. Could we find it? Sure. Will it hurt us later on? It may. Uh, so I can't really give, in, give you a guarantee. Uh, Scott's budget contains a professional, I shouldn't say Scott's, the IT division's budget contains a professional services line item uh, that is there for engaging either companies or agencies like NIU to come in and help us uh, move technology forward. And I think you heard Scott say this fiber optic project does help us uh, connect a lot of the facilities that we have, helps out a lot of other agencies in downtown Joliet. But from my perspective, it's the people who aren't here right now that we need to go out and get, uh, especially private enterprise, to get them to invest in downtown Joliet. And if they see that there's a fiber optic network that they can tap into, these users of high volumes of, of the internet, that's who we market to, and that's who we want to bring here. It'll help us, no doubt about it, but we're not doing it just for us. We're doing it for that customer down the road that we're going to try to attract, and if we've got the tools in the toolbox, we're going to be competing with the other towns that have done this. If we don't have the tools, we're going to be selling the Rialto and the museum and Harris and the ballpark and all the other things that we always sell, but we don't have the technology to sell. So that's why I think it's important to move forward with the project. It, and, and some of those, uh, some of those <coughs> groups you just mentioned, as well as the city center partnership, can certainly help out with it. And that, that's what they were checking into, to be uh, to be frank, is who, who would be uh, 
willing to participate because it's going to be beyond just the city of Joliet. It's going to be private business that benefits. It's going to be places like the Rialto that benefit. Yeah, I don't mind. I mean, if, if the direction from the council is to go knock on the doors of the county and the Rialto and the museum and the library and ask for money, that's fine. I can do that. I do a lot of begging in my job. <laughs> but in, in this case, you know, we're asking the county to make a $200 million investment in downtown Joliet. <clears throat> and part of running a courthouse involves an incredible amount of data that goes through there. And uh, they have done a very nice job of moving from old uh, technology to newer technology, but they're not there yet either. And they, they would certainly like to go to a paperless system that would be a lot more efficient, a lot more transparent, where people can look up cases um, just sitting at home uh, on, their, on their own laptop. And, you know, I, can I go ask them for a thousand bucks for this? I probably could. But my real ask for them is to commit to downtown Joliet with a $200 million project. And I think that's where we need to spend our time uh, discussing that. $8,000 isn't, uh, it is a lot of money, but I think that this is going to enhance our chances to develop downtown. Uh, you know, I feel we need to move forward with this, Mikey. That Your Honor, Tom, did you say it is in the budget? It is. 8, and, um, is the committee going to have a recommendation by the next meeting? Well, actually, we were going to bring it forward. It was staff that wanted to wait. Uh, oh. Because we, th we, we wondered if it was going to be on the agenda for tonight, and we were told no. Okay, well, we don't have an alternate funding source. We thought <coughs> what we needed to do was to bring that back to CPIS to say, well, here's some options. What do you guys think? And then put it on the agenda. Uh, let me make this clear. You thought they were going to bring it back if they had an ultimate funding source. No, no, we asked if it was going to be brought back on this. On, um, right. We did ask them to look for other alternatives. But in the meantime, I thought that part was going to come back for uh, later on mm -hmm. to have other partners partner with us. Not not particularly just for the 8000 We want to know what the 8000 was for. Mm -hmm. And then we were told about that. Then he brought back the um, looking for alternate funding. We talked about it. We wanted to partner. And then after that, we said, well, you're going to have that on the agenda for today. And he said, well, correct me if I'm wrong. You said not, we, you weren't ready yet. Staff wasn't ready yet. Based on the, on the funding, funding source, right? right. Funding, right. Well, I because thought we didn't, at that point, we didn't, I don't believe, I didn't have a problem with the 8,000, but I thought it was a good idea to go out and identify more sources of funding. I, I think in clarity, I, I kind of walked away thinking they weren't going to present it tonight until they exhausted because you're right, our thing was if we can't find another source, you're right, Tom. It's something we want to move forward to. But remember, this is going to lead to other expenditures right. for actually installing the network. Right. And that know, would, so no let's action do it right from the, from the get-go. No action would be taken on any other spending unless it came forward. Because right. This is really just to develop a business case. It doesn't make sense to do any of this at all. And the reason in the beginning we asked it to come back to committee was we didn't know anything about it at first. So we wanted to know exactly what the money was going to be spent for. Even if... It, even if we do this, you can still look for alternative. Right. Funding. Absolutely. Um, you know, there are other commercial alternatives. What we're hoping to do is to get higher speeds at lower cost right. relative to competition. And then we would bring those forward and, you know, go with the most cost-effective solution. For this is more like seed money to get started. Right? It is. Yeah. Councilman. I had a question. Could you explain to us why we're looking at this just for this small region in the entire city of the Joliet? We're talking about this high-fiber optic being an economic engine for development and leasing it out to governmental entities in the museum of the Rialto. Is there a reason why we're pigeonholing ourselves in this study into a small region, not looking at it citywide and how we could utilize this to bring people to some of our major commerce uh, cross sections of the city like Larkin and Jefferson and we're looking far west at the corner of 59 and and uh, Caton Farm. I mean, is there a reason why we're limiting the study to a small section of Joliet and not citywide? We got to start somewhere, and it, we figured that that was the best place to start given the, the Transportation Center campus and our requirement to get high speed connectivity to it. There would be no reason why we couldn't look broader, and I completely agree that it's the right thing to do to look you know, to a broader. I, I'd section like to see city. staff look citywide, why we're looking at one section of the city and not invest. Not just eight thousand. Maybe it cost you sixteen thousand, and see what it is citywide. I mean, do we have any? I'm sorry. No, that, that's right. Do we have any idea of what it would cost to do that? I, I don't know what it would cost. I, my, my recommendation is we, we we start with a focus area, and then we go from there. And if we want to spend more money to expand its scope, we can bring it back here and talk about it. Okay. Your it, Honor, there, there's nothing that would bar us or limit us from from looking further out. You know, for the broader 
needs of the city. I just feel we need to look citywide. I mean, this is an important part of uh, economic commerce in the city, and I agree with you. This is a brilliant idea for staff to bring experts in. But again, we're devoting too much time to one section of the city and not citywide. We need commerce and economic development and all the tools, as our city manager says in the toolbox, citywide, not just one geographic small region. Mike. Your Honor, Tom, this isn't on the agenda, so we can't vote tonight, correct? Correct. Um, I would I would like to see Scott's recommendation voted on at the next meeting. Well, he, he's supposed to bring it back next week. If, but we, we can't do it tonight. Well, no, we can't do it, but if I may, we did, I know, maybe this is where the miscommunication came in within the communication <laughs> committee, but um, I, it was my understanding that we were, this was, you were, you were going to hold off on bringing it today. I didn't realize the urgency of it, but we did ask you to um, identify alternative uh, companies that could do this, because I remember I said something about there are companies out there that will look at this and they won't charge you for it, but then you, we didn't know what the backside was going to be that they would do this preliminary thing for free and some just do a little consultant fee. And believe that was my question to that day. Okay. Um, there are commercial alternatives like Comcast and AT&T, Verizon, those, those types of people. Right. Sometimes they'll do some front end engineering at no cost in the interest of long term service fees. Um, what we're saying is um, we always have the option of going to them for, you know, for a proposal and a quote when we have something. This will help us kind of set some standards and allow us to be in a position to, to even go to them with, you know, this is what we'd like to look at. What would, what would it cost for you guys to build it for us? And that, that's really what we're, what we're trying to do now. If there's no obje objection, we'll have Scott bring it back in two weeks. Also, I don't know if that's enough time to oh, get. Oh, that's plenty of time. No, but I mean to get a ballpark figure to do what uh, Councilman McFarland was talking about, what it would cost to. Uh, I, I think we can do that as well. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. Very good. So do we want another meeting then? Maybe. Then, uh, well, if you yeah, if you feel it's necessary, absolutely. That's up to you. And yeah, we'll just you know, get, put it on the next agenda. Right. That's fine. Thanks. Okay. One last thing. I know I'm taking a lot of your time right now, but I want to toot the horn of, of the council members who are part of the CTIS committee regarding open government and transparency things that they have brought forward in the last couple of years that really are not well known. Uh, first of all, they launched the new website. Um, uh, and we're in the process of working with our purchasing group to have an online bids and proposals uh, section. Um, we've done the government outreach, the go re request application where citizens can and, and, uh, submit complaints and requests through their smartphones and or the web. Um, they've implemented a number of Granicus initiatives, including the iPads that you use in front of you tonight, all of the live and archive video streaming that people benefit from uh, every week. Um, we recently introduced the vote log and automated minutes, which is helping Chris to uh, uh, you know, be more efficient and get things uh, out to you guys quicker. Um, she's working on standardized committee agenda formats so that we can extend the Granicus infrastructure to the committees and publishing all of our audio and committees to the public. Uh, plan commission and zoning board videos will soon then be, also, will be out there. <coughs> Uh, we're working on FOIA enhancements uh, where they can have online requests. Um, and uh, through Councilman Hug, he asked us to put a video piece together that helps the citizens understand better how to interact with us through these mechanisms. Uh, and uh, it's a good idea and something that we're trying to take forward. Um, additional initiatives that, that, uh, that they're planning to have us uh, look at include uh, automated workflow to further streamline uh, the creation of agendas instead of moving emails around and people uh, getting signatures on, stuff like that. Uh, automatically recording roll call motions and votes <coughs> during the council meetings to streamline your meetings. Uh, and then finally, a civic engagement suite, which is something that's being looked at by that team to, uh, to better engage the community and to get them more involved in the governing process. So I think that, that committee has done a, a fine job of taking uh, these types of things forward uh, and there's only, you know, uh, just more stuff in the pipeline. So that was it for the report. That's what we discussed at CTIS. Uh, I'll take any more questions or that'll be it. Just want, to, just want to comment. Thank you for your comments for our committee, but you know, it's been a pleasure working with the staff and, and Krista and yourself. And uh, I mean, without all of us together, this wouldn't happen. So it's a team, team effort. So thank you as well. Okay. Ditto.
<laughs> and you know, you know, it's a pleasure to work with, with you and your whole staff to bring uh, Joliet from the 1970s into the 2010s. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Finance Committee report. You know, the Finance Committee comprised of Councilman Girl, Councilman Hug, and myself <coughs> met at 5:45 this evening in the conference room. Uh, we uh, reviewed the uh, executive summary for the uh, OPEB uh, actuarial uh, valuations. We uh, looked at the 2012 Treasurer's Report, looked at the April financials, which are uh, looks like we are uh, right in line with uh, our 2013 budget projections. Um, we uh, looked at conference travel, Treasurer's disbursements, <coughs> found, found them all to be in order and recommended their approval. Second. Public Service Committee report. You know, the Public Service com Committee, comprised of Councilwoman Barber, Councilman McFarland, and myself, met yesterday afternoon prior to the pre council meeting and reviewed the contracts, change orders, pay estimates, and final payments. Uh, found them all to be in order, recommended their approval. We also looked at a uh, list of downtown <coughs> projects that will be taking place, whether they're city projects or utility projects, through 2013. Uh, also reviewed staff recommendation on a uh, stop sign at Theodore Street uh, and Great Ridge Roth stop Roth Roth Road. Um, no action was taken on that. Uh, so had some discussion and it was tabled to the next uh, committee, next uh, public service committee meeting. Thank you. I show no other reports. We did have a request to move up the proclamation on the agenda this evening. The proclamation is honoring Stephanie Hawkins, a recipient of the Milken Educator Award. Come up here, Stephanie. Okay. We've actually. Uh, are going to be honoring uh, Stephanie Hawkins here. Uh, Stephanie uh, received the uh, the Milken Educator Award, um, which is a very esteemed honor uh, for an elementary school teacher. And I think all of us, I know myself, uh, have just uh, hold our elementary school teachers in such high regard. Um, um, Stephanie is a uh, is a second grade school teacher, and I think at the elementary school level. It's so important because you're getting these kids at such a young age, and they are basically they are so hungry and thirsty for knowledge, and it's and it's educators like yourself that are are nurturing that uh, that desire uh, for education and academics. Um, I also think it's it's uh, very interesting and, and great. You know, you never know what's going to come out of these kids' mouth. I'm sure at, at the second grade level, and and I can attest to that. About a, I think it was maybe about a year and a half ago. I had the honor in District 86 uh, to serve as principal for a day, and it was it was just a, a lot of fun. And I went into a, I think it was a second grade class or a third grade class, and uh, kind of introduced myself. You know, my name is is John Girl, and I'm a Joy City Councilman, and kind of told him a little bit, you know, what we do on the City Council and, and that sort of thing. And you know, got done with a you know about a two minute presentation, and there was a little guy up front, and he raised his hand, he said he had a question. I said yes, you know. Young man, what's your question? He said, are you a politician? <laughs> and I said, uh, well, I, I, I guess I am. And he says, my dad doesn't like politics. <laughs> <laughs> he said, really? I said, what does he think about CPAs? And there, there was no comment there, so I figured I was one for two. <laughs> anyway, I think it's just uh, it's a lot of fun, you know, what you do. And we, we really recognize you. We thank you for coming down uh, today. And uh, we have a proclamation for you by the mayor and city council, and I'm going to read it for you. Uh, Stephanie Hawkins, a second grade school teacher at Lynn Thigpen Elementary School, was recognized by the Milken Family Foundation with the Milken Educator Award and was the only teacher in Illinois to receive this award this year. This award is designed to recognize young to mid-career teachers and encourage them to continue teaching for years to come. <coughs> it also is intended to show children how important teachers are and inspire them to pursue teaching careers. Stephanie started teaching in 2005, working in Oswego and Yorkville School District, and was hired by the Joy Public School District 86 in August of 2010, teaching at Lynn Thigpen Elementary School for the last three years. 
She is an outstanding teacher, a natural leader, loves her students, and is passionate about reading. Her students not only read grade level, but learn to read above grade level. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, Thomas Gerani, Mayor of the City of Joliet, Illinois, on behalf of the Joliet City Council, do hereby congratulate Stephanie Hawkins on winning the Milken Educator Award and extend our great pride in your dedication and quality education and sincere gratitude for a job well done. Yeah. Speeches lately to adults. It's a little bit different. Um, well, now you got the city council. Yes, so, yeah. I would like to just thank the city council for recognizing me for this huge accomplishment in my career. I'm so honored to work for the city of Joliet. There are so many incredible families in this community. I would like to thank Kim Gordon, Cherise Beach, my other administrator, and Dr. Coleman for all of their support and for challenging me every day. <laughs> and my colleagues at Lynn Big Ten Elementary School, they are all incredible and deserve this award just as much as I do. So thank you very much. Next, agenda items and reports. The Treasurer's Report for April 2013 and Council Memo 208-13, the 2012 Annual Treasurer's Report. It is recommended these reports be received and placed on file. So moved. Second. Questions? Krista? It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman McFarland. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilwoman Barber. Aye. Mayor Gerani. Aye. Motion carried. Item C was approved at yesterday's pre-council meeting. Next, ordinances and resolutions. Under ordinances, Council Memo 209-13 was denied at yesterday's pre-council meeting. <coughs> Under resolutions, Council Memo 211-13, a resolution to approve and authorize the execution of an intergovernmental license agreement between the City of Joliet, the Joliet Park District, and Impact Outdoor LLC for digital signs on select city monument locations. It is recommended said resolution be be adopted. So moved. Second. Any questions? Krista. In motion and seconded to approve. <coughs> Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman McFarland. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilwoman Barber. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Mayor Gerani. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 212-13, a resolution authorizing the acquisition of 126 Willow as a land donation. It is recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. Questions? Krista? It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman McFarland? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. Councilwoman Barber? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Mayor Geron? Aye. <coughs> Motion carried. Council Memo 213-13, a resolution requesting authorization to implement a tobacco enforcement program. It is recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. Any questions? Been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilwoman Barber. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman McFarland. Aye. Mayor Gerani. Aye. Motion carried. Approval of regular current bills. Council Memo 215-13, regular payroll for April 5th through April 18th, 2013, $3,105,928.71. Council Memo 216-13, regular payroll for April 19th, 2013 through May 2nd, 2013, $3,067,669.97. Treasurer's disbursements for April 2013, $12,592,573.05. .05. And regular claims for April 2013, $2,776,833.06. .06. It is recommended said regular payroll, treasurer's disbursements, and regular claims be approved. So moved. Second. Questions? Krista? 
Been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilwoman Barber. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman McFarland. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Mayor Gerani. Aye. Motion carried. Bids and contracts under award of contracts. Council Memo 217-13 was pulled from the agenda. Council Memo 218-13, a purchase of 15-inch brush chipper forestry division. Council Memo 219-13, purchase a replacement well pump for Rock 1. Council Memo 220-13, award contracts for the East Side Wastewater Treatment Plant Bar Screen Replacement Construction Project. It is recommended Council Memos 218-13 through 220-13 be approved. So moved. Second. Tom, you want to explain uh, why uh, 217 was pulled? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this is a proposal for the purchase of four uh, tandem axle trucks uh, with plow accessories for the, uh, I believe, uh, utilities and public works department. Uh, there's a question on the low bid that we need to look at, and we'll report back at the next meeting report to the Public Service Committee. Very good. Any other questions? Krista. In motion and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. Councilwoman Barber? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman McFarland? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Mayor Gerani? Aye. Motion carried. Amendments, change orders, and payments. Council Memo 222-13 approved change order number one and payment estimate number two for surveying drafting services for the South Downtown Water Main Improvements Project. Council Memo 223-13 approved change order number three and payment estimate number four and final for the 2012 sidewalk curb replacement project. Council Memo 224-13 approved change order number one and payment request number one for the Chicago Street Sewer Improvement Project. It is recommended Council Memo 222 through 224-13 be approved. So moved. Second. Questions? Anyone? Krista? In motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Turk? Aye. Councilwoman Barber? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman McFarland? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Mayor Gerardo? Aye. Motion carried. Proclamation was previously presented. Next is new business, not for final action or recommendation. Mayor? Sure. Um, Mayor, as we know, last year the Housing Authority at Joliet received an unsatisfactory performance rating from uh, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, after that happened, you called for the resignation of all the members of the Housing Authority. Some were accepted, some weren't. Um, and then recently, in a couple, a couple meetings ago, we voted on this council um, in favor of a resolution that, which would support a recovery agreement between the Housing Authority and HUD. Um, as it stands right now, there really is no oversight for this council to see whether or not the Housing Authority is following the recommendations that HUD made or, or following the recovery agreement. And since this came up, I know myself, I think others on the council have been contacted by some of the people over there. Some may be disgruntled, um, former employees, but a lot of allegations are being made, at least privately, about uh, some of the things that are happening on the Housing Authority. So I would like... Um, Obviously, we can't do this tonight, but I would ask next week on the agenda if we can have a vote whether or not we should um, establish a committee here to oversee the Housing Authority, much like we have committees to oversee some of the other things that are happening in the city. I think the whole council uh, bears some responsibility for what's happening there. I know, Mayor, you make the recommendations as to appointments, but we all vote on it, and I think it would be proper. Um, but again, it's something I want to bring up in new business. Maybe we can discuss a little bit tonight or kind of vet in the next two weeks, but I would ask that we put this on the agenda in two weeks. Just for your information, a while back we did ask uh, Kenny Mahalich to attend the meetings and oversee the budget process and so forth and so on. Uh, <coughs> Kenny, I don't know if you've, if you've been there uh, lately or what, what's happening over there. Uh, that's not on, your microphone's not on. I think he's saying that he has nothing Perfect. new to report. Oh, nothing new to report? Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, the council knows the, the, the reasons they did not pass was not misuse of funds and so forth. It was the fact that they didn't file their reports in a timely fashion. They had the reports done, but whoever was in charge of filing them uh, didn't file them in a timely fashion. It's not if there's any funds missing. <coughs> I know right now they're having a big problem because of the sequester. Uh, they had a layoff about 13 people over there. 
Uh, so there's things that's probably not going to get done because they are running short. I met with Michael Simonson about 10 days, two weeks ago, and he gave me an update on what's going on. So they have had some layoffs. And there has been some complaints. In fact, we had a while back, if you remember, we had somebody at the council meeting here complaining that they were mistreated. And after looking into it, we found out that uh, they weren't mistreated. I mean, they did they did break the rules, and that's why they were asked to leave. But if you want a committee to oversee that, I don't have any problem with that. But uh, yeah, they said we can vote on that. Sure. That's a, that's a meeting. Sure. I, I would, uh, if I may, Mayor. Sure. I, I, I think it's a good idea from Councilman Orkert because you know, for the ballpark, land use, uh, ZBA, we have committees, and the city does bear some risk exposure mm -hmm. when it comes to Hodge. So here we would be able to have a monthly report just like we do with the ballpark, you know. And so I, too, would like to see this put together between now and the next meeting. Just for your information that Susie Barber is chairman of that uh, board. Right. There. No, we're aware of that. Right. Okay. All right. Mayor. Sure. I would, uh, I would ask that I uh, uh, work with staff. If, if the uh, council allows to give us a scope and pass this as an ordinance as we do the finance committee under the council to give us some parameters and I think uh, what I like to see is that we basically utilize this committee to make sure we're following what HUD is stipulated in this recovery uh, act that, that the council passed to make sure we have a scope uh, to make sure that we are meeting the standards that HUD has laid out in this agreement to make sure that we have a close, uh, a, uh, a uh, narrow scope of this committee. So just to quash any fears to the housing authority that we're on a witch hunt or whatnot, but actually that we are looking to abide what HUD's recommendations are. Yeah, um, I'd like to say something for a moment, Mayor. Sure, sure. I think that we are, I think that we are trying to follow, just following HUD's uh, uh, and our commitments to the housing authority. I've been here for a very long time. We've got new people that's coming in that is handling things right now as overseeing the housing authority. So I think that uh, I don't see a problem with people coming over looking to see what's going on also, but um, things that wasn't uh, straightened out is getting straightened out right now. So just give me a little time, it's gonna be okay. Just for your information about uh, after this, they, they failed, uh, Michael Samuelson, myself, met with four representatives from HUD and they pointed out uh, the discrepancies and what the problems were. Michael Simonton come up with a plan that showed what he was gonna do and the dates it was gonna be completed by and he's adhering to them down the line and HUD is very happy with what's happening over there and the fact that they are turning things around. Just so you know. I, mean, I, I think this conversation is good. Um, it, it really hasn't come up in a public forum before, re really privately. We haven't discussed what's happening over there. I guess that would be my, my purpose. That would be the point of the committee so the council can be kept informed. And, and I'll tell you what I can do, uh, Bob. I can get you a copy of what HUD, the, what they found the problems were and what the uh, corrections that Michael Simonton is in the process of making. It's a little in-depth, but I, I'm sure I can get everybody on this board, uh, council a, a copy. I appreciate that. Okay? Thank you. Sure. Anything else? No. Next is Mayor and Council comments. Michael. Uh, Your Honor, a few things. Um, it's been a busy week here in the city. Uh, last Wednesday night I attended the uh, <coughs> police awards dinner. Uh, you, were, you were there yourself, uh, Councilman Grohl, Councilman Morris, Councilman Quillman. Uh, the, uh, we listened to the, uh, uh, the actions that the officers took to get their awards both the sworn individuals and the, uh, and the civilians. I'd like to uh, uh, congratulate all of them. Also attended cruise night. I saw you down there, Mayor. Um, I think for the first night, it was a, the weather was perfect. And I think, I don't know, I don't, I'm not good at estimating, but I, I would say they probably had 60 cars and, mm -hmm. and, a, and a pretty decent crowd. And uh, uh, John Holstrom really puts a lot of effort into that, uh, that event and uh, does a great job. Um, Slammers, uh, the new Slammers team opened up over the weekend. Um, I was there Friday night, uh, and uh, I think that uh, the owners were pleased with what they saw. It was a very decent crowd, and I think it was a, uh, it, was, it was a good time. Uh, also attended the opening day Miracle League uh, ceremonies on uh, Saturday morning, ran into Councilman Quillman and Councilman Morris there. Uh, it's their sixth season. Uh, so they have a record number of uh, 
uh, individuals. I think, what do you say, 168, I think, yes. uh, playing this year. Also have a competitive, uh, some, a couple of competitive teams that they now have. And uh, so it's, uh, that's going well and strong. They were very, very uh, complimentary of the new owners of the Slammers, how cooperative they've been and, and to work with them. Uh, and also, uh, like to wish you good luck tomorrow with your surgery. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Awesome. I would just like to add to Councilman Turk's comments about the Miracle League. If you have a free moment on a Saturday for the first six weeks in spring and six weeks in fall to come out to the ballpark, they play just north of the regular Slammers field, and to watch these kids play <coughs> ball for the very first time with crutches and wheelchairs, and it's just so that every child gets to play baseball and get the parents can sit in the audience and watch these kids play because every child has a buddy to help them to, to the bases. And it's a big thrill, and they have their own T-shirts, their own teams. We sing the national anthem. So come on out on Saturday. It starts at 8 o'clock or 8.30 in the morning, and it goes to around 4 in the afternoon, and it's until it gets warm, and then they pick up again in the fall. But uh, it, it's really heartwarming to watch these kids. Uh, just one other note. I just wanted to know... Um, do we have any ordinances? I had a couple of neighborhood groups uh, approach me about planting flowers in the median strips, for example, along Chicago Street, you know, like they have on Rainer. Is there, um, they, they want to take that over and help beautify the city as a neighborhood group. And uh, I told them I would bring that to the council if there's any issues and to see if we could do that. Because I don't know if there'd be any liability, you know, mm -hmm. being in the middle of a busy really street. Really would be. There's there's some risk in uh, I think with Chicago Street uh, we have a state route issue that we have to work on but it's something that we don't want to discourage that if there's groups that want to help us beautify Joliet we need to embrace them and find a way to make it happen um, why don't we look at it and then we'll bring it back to you give us a couple weeks to work on it and uh, see what we can do certainly those streets under our jurisdiction that have medians like. Uh, Bronk Road and, uh, of course, Rainer and a few of the others, we have control over that. But a state route like Chicago Street, we'd have to check with IDOT and see what the limitations are. That's what are. I thought. That's why I wanted just to bring it to see where we stood with that. And then the next thing I have is uh, just happy anniversary to my husband of 33 years on Friday. Love you. <laughs> Thank you I must be doing something right, though. <laughs> 33 years. <laughs> um, I, I'll second or third the comments that were made about the Miracle League. Um, I was exposed to that last year for the first time. It's a, it's an, a really great experience. Also, this weekend, um, South Paul, the White Sox mascot, is going to be at the fields at 9.30 a.m. So, again, anybody, um, if, if you really want to see something nice or support these young children or their families who are, really go through a lot, um, go out there and, and watch one of these games. Um, Miss Linda Lasota is here from the, the Joliet Hope Center. Linda, I don't want to put you on the spot. I think you're going to be uh, on the agenda in a couple weeks. Okay, I met Linda uh, last week at a fundraiser, and I learned about the Joliet Hope Center, and she's going to present something to the council. Um, it's a real positive organization also. I'm looking forward to your uh, presentation. Thank you for coming. And uh, finally, I want to thank um, ComEd and Mr. Jeff Hetrick. I had been dealing with them for a little while. It was an issue of a, a leaning light pole in my district. Um, it seemed simple enough that the pole had to be replaced, but um, I guess not being an electrician, I didn't realize how much went into it, including shutting power down for all the seniors in the neighborhood and, and the school and everything that would be affected by it. You're the reason we had I no the power. Reason. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Jeff, thank you uh, for, for working with us in ComEd. And on behalf of the people in the neighborhood, I know they're all grateful. It was a job that needed to get done. And, Jan, sorry you were put out for a few That's, No, no, <laughs> I would like to comment on ComEd because they did notify everyone in the community that it was going to happen <clears> on Saturday. <throat> they just didn't do it, and it was, it was nice that people knew about it right. ahead of time. Right. So thank you, and good luck on your surgery. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, not to be redundant, but as uh, Councilman Turk said about the police award ceremony, I'd just like to congratulate Chief Crafton on a, a good award ceremony, as, as well as uh, the officers uh, that participated and received awards. Uh, and as uh, Councilman Quillman and Bob said, and Councilman Turk, I guess, all of the, uh, the Miracle League. Right down the uh, it was my second time uh, actually out there, first time this year because it was the opening. But this time I got a chance to uh, share with Miss uh, Farrell, right? Mm -hmm. right. right, and she kind of uh, explained a lot of the uh, situations to me as opposed to the first time I was just out there to see the kids. But that, again, as the other council 
uh, members have said it would be really wonderful to get out and uh, and share with them at the Miracle League. That's all. I'd just like to remind the residents of Joliet to please watch your driving in the neighborhoods as school is letting out for the uh, summer. I know that we're all in a hurry and we want to get to the swimming pool and our baseball games and soccer games, but please be courteous of our, our school children that are out running the streets. And I'd also like to uh, thank the city staff, especially the Joliet Police Department, for rectifying an issue at the corner of uh, Norley and Rainer Ave over by St. Joe's Park. We had a uh, young individual hit by a car, and uh, I want to thank the staff for uh, jumping uh, really uh, out there early on to uh, rectify that situation. So thank you from the residents of Joliet and myself. Thank you. Councilman. I, too, would like to congratulate Chief Trafton and the entire police department. Unfortunately, Chief, I was unable to make it. I was spending that evening in the uh, present St. Joe's emergency room. My daughter had uh, broke her finger and needed to have pins put in it. And uh, leads me to my second point. After congratulating the police force, I certainly will thank uh, President St. Joe's, Joe's for their wonderful, wonderful care. We got a great hospital here in Illinois, or in Joliet, and in Illinois. We're in the same uh, state. <laughs> I also attended a fundraiser last Friday. It was down in Cold City because it's the Will County Will Grundy Sportsman Club, and uh, it was a fundraiser for United Cerebral Palsy, and uh, I'm happy to say that uh, this organization raised over $90,000 that evening. There was quite a few people there. I won't start naming them, some in this room, um, because I'll leave somebody out. However, one of the organizers was our own Joe Clement. I know you don't like that, Joe. Give a little wave, let everybody see who you are. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. What, you, what you're doing for those young folks and, and, and for the adults at UCP, that's fantastic. And he does it every year. So thank you, Joe. And finally, my son's graduating this Thursday from uh, Plainfield School District 202's Timber Ridge Middle School. So I'm going to congratulate him and tell him how proud I am of him. But I'm also going to congratulate all the graduates. It's graduation time from Plainfield School Districts, Troy and Joliet, from all the school districts in our city. Congratulations on your uh, on your graduation and uh, get prepared maybe you can fix the mistakes that we make later on huh council i have no comments from susie well i'd like to say to um diane stoner she was in the hospital and she told me to that everybody knows at the council that she has to pray for her okay. that she's uh in room 8025 at saint joseph's hospital thank you thank you <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> excuse me last night we had part of the uh, Joliet Township High School Band here. Um, I want to congratulate the Historical Museum for the strike up the band, 100 years of Joliet Township High School Bands. Uh, that exhibit was selected for a 2013 merit winner by AASLH, American Association for State and Local History based in Nashville, Tennessee. They will be receiving the award on February 20th at the annual meeting in Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama. There's a lot of work that went into that exhibition. I want to congratulate the Historical Museum. Also, I received a complaint for the residents of Riverwalk Subdivision. It's uh, behind Coles. Uh, we had a problem before with the noise, the delivery trucks between midnight and 5 a.m. And we thought we had it uh, rectified, but evidently it's happening again. So we need to have somebody look, look into that. Uh, the people are complaining they can't sleep. And lastly, uh, last evening, we talked about the, a diversity committee. And I, I contacted uh, these people I'm going to name before the meeting. I just, tonight, I figured I'd, I'd make these appointments. Uh, I would like uh, Councilwoman Coleman to be on that committee and chair the committee. Along with, uh, on that committee would be Councilman Hug and Councilman McFarland uh, serving on that committee. Thank you, Your Honor. Sure. And that's all I have. We need a vote on that, ma'am? There uh, should be a vote. Yes, okay. So establishing the committee and confirming the appointments. Okay. The nomination. So in two weeks? One vote. A combined vote would be fine. Second. Before we vote, can I? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, f first thing, I I'd like to thank the mayor for uh, and the staff, I'm sure, uh, for trusting me, I guess, with the chairman of the Land Use Committee. Uh, 
uh, I, I know that's a big responsibility, so I, I'd like to personally thank you. And I'm sure you probably referred to staff before you. No, made, I did not. You didn't? No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> well, they haven't been coming to tell you that you made a bad choice. <laughs> Again, thank you. And, and also, I, I'd like to thank the, the, the mayor for uh, 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 asking me about serving on the diversity committee, uh, in, in which I, at, at, at this point, uh, know my plate is a little full. Yeah. And I, I want to be able to serve, you know, the, the city well, and only spread myself too thin. Uh, and my wife, she may <laughs> have some problems with it too. I'm gone enough already. Um, but I definitely will work with uh, the co the committee members uh, as much as I can, uh, so they can be feel free to call on me at any time, as well as the community. But I just like to make make that mention. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Mayor, are we finished? Uh, do we have to vote or can we vote on it? Yeah. Well, I, th I think the council has the authority tonight to establish an internal working <coughs> committee um, of the three individuals that you mentioned. You can do that tonight. Okay. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. And approve it at the next meeting? No, you could do it tonight. Any Excuse questions? Me. Kristen? Motion and seconded to approve a diversity committee. Councilwoman Barber? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman McFarland? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. Mayor Gerani? Aye. No other business? Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, so. Mayor, sure. I would I'm like sorry. to go into closed session to discuss personnel. I'd like to also go in for litigation. Okay. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. In motion and seconded to go into closed session to discuss personnel, collective bargaining, land acquisition, or conveyance pending or threatened litigation, after which meeting will be adjourned. Mm -hmm. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman McFarland? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. Councilwoman <coughs> Barber? Aye. Mayor Gerani? Aye.